Hello Internet! This video is a part of a video series focuses on Blender using different modeling techniques for 3D printing. Today I want to show a process how more complex scalable vector graphics or SVG graphic files can be processed in Blender and can be used for our modeling purpose. We will use a very nice example file with some Celtic patterns provided by craftmanspace.com. You'll find the link in the description below. SVG files can be used to serve as a starting point for 3D models and can be used for various applications. You can use the processed models for 3D printing or using them as an input for CNC machining or many other use cases. In this video I show the necessary Blender settings. We will have a look onto how to solve conversion problems and how to perform the necessary cleanup procedures to process the SVG data in Blender. But enough words, let's start right after the intro. In my eyes, Celtic pattern combining ancient and modern design aspects. Beside their cultural and mystical meaning, they also have a strong relationship to mathematics and many built on mathematical principles. Known sources of these patterns go back to the ancient Rome, but probably the origin of the patterns is much further back in time. In the 7th century, similar designs were used by Coptic monks from Syria or Egypt to illuminate manuscripts. These patterns were adopted and modified by different cultures, also by the Celts, and they developed their own designs based on the original ones. If you are interested in the background, I recommend the Wikipedia article as a start. You can find a link to Wikipedia and other resources in the video description below. I downloaded this example file from the website craftmanspace.com. They have a lot of interesting content. Go and visit the site and check it out yourself. You can also find the link in the video description below. I wanted to use some Celtic patterns as a template for a project in my workshop. Unfortunately, you find the most of the examples as 2D graphics, many of them as SVG files. Therefore, I have to convert this SVG file in a usable model in Blender. SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphics, therefore the acronym SVG. SVG is a specification based on XML and recommended by the World Wide Web Consortium to display two-dimensional vector graphics in the World Wide Web. SVG files contain instructions for 2D drawings in XML notation. These notations can be interpreted and drawn by SVG capable interpreter programs, for example, your browser or other software components. I think the most of you know Inkscape as a widely used SVG editor and, and vector graphic design. Here is a small example with a circle. The circle is described in the form of XML and saved as SVG file. This file can then be processed by a SVG capable software program or imported into Blender. For the import, the Blender SVG add-on can be used. It comes with a Blender installation and has to be activated in the add-on sections of the preferences menu. After activation, an SVG file can be read in Blender using the file menu Import Scalable Vector Graphics. Often, the scale of the files does not match the Blender scale and the files are displayed very small. In order the clipping in Blender does not suppress the display of these very small objects, the clipping should be adjusted in the few settings. Just see my configuration steps shown in the video. I set the visible range in the few settings in a range from 0.0001 to 10,000 meter. Of course, this can have an effect on performance in using complex 3D scenes, but uh, since clipping is almost non-existent now, but for this case, with a limited count of objects, it should not be a problem. In this example, the SVG data is imported as curves with or without filled areas. 
like faces. For my project, I use the SVG data with filled areas and delete the rest. After the import of the Celtic pattern SVG file, the individual shape parts are imported as curve objects in Blender. Now we can convert them to meshes using the following overall process. Here I show the wrong approach. I first combined the individual curve objects with object join and then converted them into a mesh. This led to problems with the mesh geometry. The best approach, in my opinion, is to give Blender more information to do the curve to mesh conversion. First, the curve objects of a pattern must be selected. For this purpose, a curve part must be pre-selected in the object mode and then all other required objects must be selected in addition using the shift key. If you now change in edit mode, we can work with all curve segments of all pre-selected curve objects. The models need to be prepared for the conversion into meshes. For this purpose, I first go to the edit mode and select all curve segments and add three times additional curve subdivisions. This gives Blender more information for the conversion of the curves into meshes. Now all the curve objects can be converted into meshes, therefore I go into the object mode and convert curves into meshes. Make sure all your normals of your initial surface have the same direction. Otherwise you will run into problems later on. Now additional cleaning activities can be done to remove unwanted geometry. In edit mode I merge all duplicate vertices, I delete all loose vertices and to get a decent topology on my curve faces I am using the face beautifier and running it over the faces of my pattern mesh. Finally. I join all the objects of a pattern in object mode. The result should be a clean mesh surface which can be extruded. As you can see in the video, the result looks not bad. Activating the Solidify modifier shows some artifacts. These artifacts are related to duplicate vertices, loose vertices or corrupted topology. Therefore, we have to clean up the mesh to get rid of the failures. For this use case, we use the mesh cleanup functions to solve our problems. First I did use merge by distance to get rid of duplicate vertices. Then I used delete loose to get rid of loose vertices. Finally, I use Decimate to decimate the overall count of vertices in our model to speed up the work process later on. To avoid having to define a static height of the objects, I use the Solidify modifier. This process needs to be repeated for all patterns. SVG files can be used to serve as a starting point for 3D models and can be used for various applications. You can use the processed models for 3D printing or using them as an input for CNC machining or many other use cases. Now we can convert the remaining curve objects. To speed up the process, I will convert all remaining curve objects at one time. Therefore, I pre-select one curve object and then shift select the remaining ones. Now I can go into edit mode 
and add additional curve segments and then convert the curves into meshes. With all curves selected, I can go into edit mode, add additional curve segments to give Bender more information to work with and then go back in object mode and convert all the curve objects into meshes. Now we can clean up the resulting mesh. Therefore we can beautify the faces as already shown in before. And in addition we can merge overlaying vertices to remove doubles to clean up our mesh and also delete loose vertices to delete unnecessary geometry and in the end we should decimate our model to have less vertices to work with. In this example I found that I could decimate the existing model by a factor of 0.5. This means uh, reducing the vertices by 50% without seeing any change on the geometry. So that was fine for me, but try it out yourself and see when the decimate function affects your mesh. Finally, we can check the normals to see if all the normals pointing in the same direction. If not, please correct it, because otherwise uh, you can have weird um, results if working with modifiers or other functions in Blender. Now we are ready to finalize the conversion task and join together all the objects that are relating to one object. Therefore I pre-select one mesh object and then shift select the other ones. With Ctrl J you're able to join the object parts together to one object. Afterwards, the created pattern objects can be processed as you like. For example, as an object for casting mold, as a template for inlays, as a component for another model, or, or, or. The possibilities are endless and there are no limits to the imagination. Here I show how the result looks like in the slicer during the preparation for 3D printing. In my case, I use Cura 4.3 as my slicer program. I picked a sample pattern for 3D printing to be able to judge how the patterns will look like after 3D printing. Here the print and the print result with a layer height of 0.2 mm. I printed the pattern on my Anycubic i3 Maker and used standard PLA filament. For the print I took more or less the Anycubic i3 standard profile in Cura and just raised the temperature a bit. But this is related to my printer and filament setup. Looking at the result I find the patterns, apart from all mysticism, very decorative and if we capture some positive energies it's even better. That should be it for today. In one of the upcoming videos I would like to show more ways how models can be generated from graphic files. I would be happy if the video helps you in your project. I am open for questions and su suggestions. Just leave them in the comment section below. If you liked the video please leave a like below or subscribe to the channel and you will not miss any content. It's for free. So all the best to you, have a good time and stay creative. Thanks for watching.